Interest Rate Forecasting Project by Jordan Murphy and Kevin Phillips. For the week of October 27th through October 31st, a plethora of big news flooded the markets, causing a great deal of volatility in the bonds, interest rates, and the yield curve. To start the week off, anticipation was built up on Monday because of the Federal Reserve meeting that was scheduled to be held on Tuesday and Wednesday. The outcome of this two-day meeting was the end of quantitative easing. This news indicated the Federal Reserve was confident enough in the market uh, and the economy as a whole to be strong enough now to improve on its own without the assistance of the bond purchasing program that kept rates artificially low. The, reserve, the reversal process of quantitative easing, however, has been put on hold due to a concern for slight deflation in the economy. They also introduced plans of a new project or experiment that will take place where the Federal Reserve offers certain banks the ability to put their loanable funds into the Res Federal Reserve Bank and earn interest on that instead of loaning out to the economy, which is pretty much another way to uh, help the Fed lower the supply of loanable funds, keeping interest rates low and prevent them from skyrocketing in the future. Another thing that is helping the economy out right now is the oil prices. They're continuing to fall, which is easing everyone's mind about possible inflation in the future. There was also a scheduled sell-off of $29 billion of the seven-year Treasury bonds on Thursday at a low interest rate of 2.01%. Because of this demand for the bonds being lower than usual, demand throughout the monthly sell-offs. With all this going on, the government in Japan unexpectedly increased its bond purchasing program in an attempt to combat its own deflation issues, causing the value of the dollar to jump to a four-year high. With Japan increasing its quantitative easing, it is going to in turn cause U.S. interest rates to trend downward or stay at a steady pace. It's yet to be seen. And as Japan bond markets trickle over to the U.S. bond market, Demand for U.S. bonds increase, causing the price to also increase and rates to drop. All right, these two curves right here is the yield curve and interest rate curve for October 27th and 28th, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it shows the volatility in both curves for the anticipation of the Federal Reserve meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday. This curve right here is a it's a cutout of the 4 to 12 year interest rates for Monday through Friday on the yield curve. You can see right here that there's a seven, that the 7 year rate has a gap in between Monday and Friday. It rose up on Friday. That's because of the $29 billion sell off that occurred on Thursday. And there wasn't as much demand for the sell off as they anticipated. It was at 2.1%. That's the lowest yield that they've had on the monthly sell-off so far. And then, again, you can see on the interest rate forecast, the dip right here, or the sell-off of the $29 billion, that's the cause of that. And then right here, there's a sell-off of the interest rates, or the bonds, for the 10-year bond rate market, and that is because of the housing market. The Fed is continuing to purchase 10-year bonds right here to keep the rates artificially low to keep the housing market stabilized as the economy grows and interest rates climb. And this is an overall climb in the yield curve for the 27th through the 31st. Right here you can see a flattening in the yield curve as the week goes on and that is because of the lowering oil prices in the economy and that is pretty much a lowering concern for inflation so the, the, the rates are starting to drop a little bit and there's less risk. And there's also the Japan market is flooding into the 30 year rate area to also drop the interest rates increasing the price of the 30 year bond. Over here you see the rise in the yield curve and that is from the end of quantitative easing or QE and that's the the bonds are not being purchased anymore and it's starting to get rid of some of the artificial drop in the yield curve so the rates are starting to go up and you can see that from the rise in the yield curve. 
And right here, there's an artificial lift right here on the yield curve at year 17 through 23. And that's from some of the data being deleted from the chart to make the yield curve touch end to end. Thank you.